Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Mac Flash Five. How are you guys? Good. What up? How are you? <laughs> in a few I'm in love. I forgot how to open the show. I'm in love. That's uh, there you're you in love. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, before we get started, though, just a little bit of a housekeeping chore here. Talk about. I'm going to talk about the return of the Mac Flash Movie Trivia return Championship. Return of the Mac Flash Trivia. <laughs> Championship. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's AB with the mm. belt. Everyone knows it. <laughs> do, you, do you sleep with that? Probably. So you Sometimes. look like you look like you're ready to go to bed right after this. Yeah. <laughs> lounging. I'm lounging. Lounging, baby. Um. So we're planning to bring. We're planning to bring that back, and uh, of course, the four of us will be playing. I know Francois is in. There might be one or two uh, new people, but that's. You know, a little bit better, but we would like a much bigger roster. So if anybody's watching this show, it's probably into movies. And if they know somebody else who's into movies and thinks they know a lot about movies, then we'd like you to come on and try out for the show. Chat great. LB, yeah. post this. Post this <laughs> to your friends. Get us people. Um, the way to do that is go to MacFlash Entertainment on Facebook. Go to the group section. You'll see the movie trivia championship group. Join. We have a sign up sheet there. We'll do a quick interview, and then hopefully sometime in the spring we'll have enough people. For, we'll have a big enough roster. It'll be you know a much epic, much more epic season. Andrew so, doesn't look. He, Andrew's just <laughs> assuming that he's going to keep that belt. <laughs> um, yeah. Hopefully we'll. Uh, also get to uh, do maybe teams matches, do tag team division. Tag your man. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, we we've been playing and it's for championships and belts, and I love those things. So anytime there, you get to mix those things up. It's like yes, let's do that. Let's so let's add mean, another division. You so just basically want to make it like as much like wrestling as possible. We're gonna have tag teams. We're gonna yeah. have belts. <laughs> maybe a ref. I mean, you can go online. This is not a new idea. We're just uh, we're gonna do our own version of it. If I get hit with a collapsible chair at some point in the middle of answering a question, I'm done. Blading. I'm gonna blade during a match. <laughs> razor, razor, razor blade. Thirteen. Yeah. Razor blade. Oh, I, I did my watch. <laughs> so what's up? What are we talking about today? Okay. Uh, today's topic, of course, you've seen the title, is love movies. Valentine's Day is <laughs> that right around cool. the corner. Love movies. Now, can we yeah, preface right. that these are yeah. like making? Yeah, these aren't. These are movies with love in the title, correct? Yes. Right. Love because otherwise, my films. list is wrong. It's yeah, clearly yeah. big it's, time. It's in the, it's in the uh, <laughs> thumbnail. It's in the title. Love is definitely in quotes. Yes. Because <laughs> the topic did come up. It's like, well, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Why don't we do our top five rom coms? And a few of us were like, meh. And <laughs> a lot. And I, that's the thing. Yeah. I, but even then, if you're doing it automatically, I would have had a list. I would have had like 50. So you have to like split the atom. Sure. You have to and, hold uh, it in a bit. Somebody else suggested, well, we'll just do love. And then in Mac Flash, you know, trivia category tradition, mm -hmm. we're going to do movies with love in the title. We've There's been uh, plenty of picture rounds and uh, uh, questions like that that Francois is going through. Um, so yeah, today top five films with love in the title. Now the way the show works is after we decide on a topic, we pick our top five. Uh, three of them we're going to talk about in depth, and we'll have two honorable mentions each. Um, I'm going to start. Um, I went the more traditional route. After I love that it was discussed, <laughs> let's do rom coms. Like, well, I could put together at least five. And then it became with, and then it said, now let's do movies with love in the title. Like that's a little trickier because you get into, in terms of the rom-com spectrum, deep into movies that I have not seen and really never planned to. Um, having said that though, my first uh, movie on the list is, um, covers two things. One, it's a James Bond movie. <laughs> hey. But it is probably the most rom commiest of them. Uh, my number three is The Spy Who Loved Me. Love it. That's awesome. Uh, now, now, in this, James Bond is, uh, well, there, 
the the villain has decided to uh, uh, take over some Russian and British subs. So some British and Russian subs are missing, and uh, James Bond is on the case to find the British one. The Russians send uh, their uh, James Bond counterpart, who is a female Russian spy, uh, to find the Russians one. They uh, meet up, becomes a meet cute uh, type thing. They fall in love, and in classic rom com, uh, you know, parlance, they fall in love break up in the middle and then get back together at the end. Now she never shows up in another movie. So obviously the relationship doesn't continue, but in terms of, you know, a rom-com story, it fits that structure. Um, this is a, one of the Roger Moore movies. So it starts to become one of those self parodies. Yeah. <laughs> thumbs down. He's not my favorite. This is Moore's best one. Probably. It's this and live and let I die. Wouldn't argue. I wouldn't. Definitely I wouldn't argue that. It's it's probably it's got good villain. If I'm not mistaken, if memory serves, I didn't rewatch. I wanted to do it for this. I think it's is it the first appearance of Jaws? It is the first appearance of Jaws. So yeah. it's a it's probably Moore's best Bond film because Jaws yeah. is in it. <laughs> no, just I'm saying because Moore's realized <laughs> live and let die is great. That's his first one. Yeah, but this gave him a little bit of years to grow into the role. There was a little bit of space from Connery, and then it was more. It was kind of in the way that Spectre was. It was serious and it was jokey, and they kind of merged the two before it gets ultimately super jokey. Yeah. It's certainly not his worst movie. That's for and sure. there are aspects to this movie that do make it one of the better ones. I mean, like you said, first appearance of Jaws. It's got the cold open where he skis off a cliff. Yes. Ripped oh, up the that was yeah. really There's good. The Union Jack is amazing. Yeah. And it has the Carly Simon song, Nobody Does It Better, which is probably the most uh, iconic Bond song. Whenever they do like an in memoriam of people who've died, who've made these movies, that song is always played. Because mm. nobody does it better. It's perfect for any time you have a montage of dead people. <laughs> I think you saying that so well we're going to get hit with a copyright. That Good. Was... <laughs> that'd, be a, that'd be a compliment. Um the spy who loved me is uh my number th uh 3. Okay. <laughs> um so we all figured okay Matt's going to have a Bond film on his. You can kind of guess uh what kind of film is going to make my list. Can you can you guess what I'm really kind of excited. Film? There will be a PTA. I'm really excited for PTA. <laughs> no, yeah, no, probably not. Uh, no, it, there's going to be a horror movie, guys. Oh, it's a, it's yeah. oh, you, oh you know you like that there's going to be a horror movie. Uh, and so, uh, a few years, a uh, few years back now, uh, I listened. I listened to this one horror podcast, and uh, they did an episode of uh, Australian horror movies. And there, there aren't too many Australian horror movies. There's a few, and but there's some really, really good ones. And so the one dude is from New Zealand, and so he's kind of like uh, the expert on on um, Australian horror. And uh, so he he talked about this one, and I watched it, and I really, really liked it. Uh, and that is from 2009, and it's called The Loved Ones, and it's directed by Sean Byrne, and it's his first movie. Uh, he we went on and uh, directed this other one called The Devil's Candy, uh, which is I really liked as well. Uh, and so the the uh, the girl there, uh, Lola, uh, she's played Mike. She's played by um, the actress from Hell on Wheels. That's with Common with that has the tattoos on her face. Mm -hmm. Eva, that's oh, yeah. that's her. That's her uh, younger. This is so this is from two thousand nine. I think the. Hell on Wheels is like 2013 or something. So this is a few yeah. years before Hell on Wheels. But so I was try um I didn't put two and two together until I just did the rewatch and I'm like, "Wait a second, that's the girl from Hell on Wheels." And so uh it follows uh this kid Brent. And so uh at the beginning the opening scene is him out driving with his dad. Uh he's driving the car and so something happens and they get into an accident and his dad is killed. And so he has all this guilt over his dad dying because because he's driving, uh, and so there, it got the, that's kind of the setup. And you see, you see something the, the thing that causes the accident is kind of weird too. Uh, but then you get into him going to high school, and he has he's there. He's got his best friend. He's he's kind of like a popular kid. He's got his girlfriend, uh, and then he um, 
this girl who's one of the, like the the social misfits from high school and it's kind of like the weird when the weird kids comes up and ask him if she uh she if he'll go to the formal the year-end formal with him and he says no uh because he's going with his girlfriend uh and so she goes away dejected uh then uh, fast forward uh this girl uh kidnaps him with has her dad kidnap him and bring her to to his house and they have like this prom set up in his house and there's kind of nods to the like uh texas chainsaw massacre and a bunch of other horror films but they have them at the the dinner table they had this dinner uh that's her like her mom there and she's like well, basically and like yeah 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 and so uh it goes to brutal brutal places and what i like about it is it it kind of takes uh the normal kind of like uh horror trope where it's you know the guy kidnapping the girl and torturing her and doing bad stuff to her and this is like a teenage girl who's like uh obsessed with boys and she like kidnaps him and wants him to be her her knight in shining armor and then does terrible terrible things to him like you can see she has you know thing carved in his chest and so that lola stone she carved her name and thing with a fork that was done with a fork. I was gonna ask if the crown on her head in the first, like on the poster, was like from those crackers. That yes, you pop and I'm like, yes. and it is, yeah. Yeah. and it, it totally yeah. is, it totally is. Uh, and so I won't get into like the torture stuff they do to it, but it's very like unique sort of things that they do. Uh, and so that <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> the wrong one out there. Uh, uh, they they do some like the, the the torture things. What I found were pretty unique, and the, what I found out was that um, some of it was based on like real life things that um, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer did to his victims, which was kind of like woo, it was kind of creepy. But uh, there's some like really really weird things uh, that they introduce in there. Uh, one of the other things I did like is that they uh, follow the best friend as he actually goes to prom with this like punk rock chick that's way out of his league. And there's like, kind of like teenage hijinks. And so like, there's a little bit of levity there to, to like downplay like the torture thing stuff that's going on. So it's not like, um, like hostile or saw where it's just like an onslaught of just nonstop torture, which I'm like, I'm not into that kind of stuff. Um, but this is like, uh, uh, it, it kind of balances it out and kind of like shows like this is what he should be doing and this is what is actually happening to him right and so uh i i really really liked it uh and it's probably one of the better ones i've seen um like so I said, what, what you're saying is um valentine's day movie with with your honey right that's a hundred percent okay hundred percent it's well it, your honey or someone you want to be your honey <laughs> and doesn't want to watch a movie with you and you like abduct her and make her watch no no we're not advocating any of that no thing. no any of that stuff none of no. it no Don't anyway yeah and that's so uh, like i said 2009 uh the loved ones from from australia it's wild <laughs> that's cool. I don't know. That's cool. I'm really glad about these lists. That's awesome because I'm really glad about these lists because they really. You're right. You do like horror movies, so you get your horror movies. And then I look at like my list, and I'm like, it's rapidly different. Well, and and uh, like we've already talked uh, talked about it on other lists too. Uh, this that I would probably unless we did like top five Australian movies, maybe <laughs> like this, yeah. this that movie would never make any other list, right. Yeah. Other than this yeah. one. So, and I actually, uh, yeah, I are legitimately really, really like that movie. So like, it's a way, uh, way for me to, us to talk about it, which works. Cool. So, so and that's funny. Cause that's going to segue into mine because there's a few films that we talked about here as well, where, um, you know, they wouldn't come up on any other kind of list. And it's perfect that we do topics like this because then this allows you to use movies otherwise. Um, so what we talked about uh, two weeks ago when we came up with this topic, I like think I rifled off the three movies. Those three stayed my three. Uh, and they were perfect because I was thinking today, I'm like, my three is a perfect three. My two is a perfect two. My one's a perfect one. And I'm happy that, that how it all broke down. So I'm going to begin here with my number three in movies with love in the title. And I'm going to go with 2003's <laughs> Down With Love directed by Peyton Reed, starring Hugh McGregor, Renee Zellweger, David Hyde Pierce, and Sarah Paulson. I rewatched this film uh, the other day, and basically it's a very harmless, swinging 60s-style 
romantic comedy. And in it, Renee Zellweger plays like a self-help guru who writes a book on female empowerment. And it's the 1960s. Uh, and at this time, Ewan McGregor is like doing his best James Bond meets Quagmire, like <laughs> God's gift to women, ladies, man, whose bed oh, is the couch that comes out and the bar swivels. And his Walk fashion is dynamite through the whole film. So in it, it's, it's like I said, it's a harmless plot. She writes the book on female empowerment, thus turning women against men because the women have all the power in it as well, too. And he thinks that's silly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to seduce this woman. I'm going to have her fall in love with me. And uh, I'm going to show her to the world that she's a fraud. As it's going, David Hyde Pierce, he's doing his David Hyde Pierce thing. Sarah Paulson's doing her thing. They're all getting mixed personalities. Uh, and again, the one interesting thing about this that I thought aged really well is the direction of Peyton Reed. So in it, there's a lot of like really interesting cuts. So when they're having a conversation on this end, one of the words starts up their conversation and it's cutting back and forth. And you're like, this is quite interesting. It's almost like uh, that they did in uh, Luis's story in Spider-Man where it was going through and you're watching, you're like, this is really interesting. So there's that. There's great shots with the camera where... You know, it's kind of like they're almost having sex because he's doing push-ups while she's down and the, there's a the line through the two phone conversation. And again, just for the idea of it being a swing in 60s style film, uh, you know, a pretty funny comedy. There's there's a scene at the end where when Renee Zellweger is like explaining her plan all along to like what she wanted to accomplish. It's like this five minute uncut monologue where she's like, in this weird way, knowing every step that Ev was going to happen through the film. And after a while you're watching, you're like, this is quite funny. The fact how she can like parlay this entire plan and the way it's done deadpan straight on her. I'm like, this is, this is really funny. So again, 2003's Down With Love is my very harmless, very fun number three. <laughs> so you're not going to do a double feature with loved ones and Down With Love? That's That would be agenda. insanity. <laughs> that would be insanity. But, uh, awesome. I, I think I saw that in the theater. I don't yeah? remember oh, anything. Cool. I don't remember anything about it, but I, I'm pretty sure that I saw it in the theater. It's cool. Honestly, like the opening credits are a lot like Catch Me If You Can. They have like that really cool swing and bond style music and like the synths and stuff. And like, yeah, the fashion is tremendous. Obviously, the fashion made a massive comeback with Mad Men. But, you know, this is very much a, like a Mad Men style comedy romp. Hmm. Well, well, I thought we already filmed the um, episode where it's you won't believe I haven't seen these movies. Because yeah. <laughs> so far... So far, I'm batting a zero here. Uh, I wonder. I wonder if we if we can make the whole episode and where I won't have seen anyone else's films. This will be interesting to see. Um, when when we discussed the concept of doing a Valentine's Day episode, I thought it was going to be like the Christmas episode, and we'd have to pick our favorite romantic films. And then I was like, oh, guys, I I remember when I told you that I fall asleep during films like The Notebook. That was on one of my lists before. But then it changed to Love, and I was like, okay, this is somewhat doable. Because I can come from a, you know, find a, find something. There's something to find. But the question was, is there five things to find? But um, this one was sort of a, a no-brainer as soon as it came up. Because, I mean, I don't think of a lot of films with the word love in them. But this one sticks in my mind. It's it's from 2002. Um, can't pass up on this. You guys might even know what I'm hinting at when I say, because um, I love this guy, Philip Seymour Hoffman, 2002. What do you think? What do you got? I thought it would be your number one, to be honest. What are you thinking? It's, PD, it's PTA. It is. Oh, come on, screen. No, it's this one. Oh, it is no, Love, okay. Liza. Okay. Oh, throw, throws a little monkey wrench. Yeah, I've never. Okay. Same year. Same year. And this is this is why I wanted to put this on my list. Um, because this is the same year. Same. He, he's in both films. What you were thinking. Uh, Punch Drunk Love in this. 2002. Um, uh, difference being, he's not the star of that one. And this one is all about cool. him now obviously he's not the title character he's not liza but liza in this film um was his wife and so the whole premise of this film a uh, very short indie film whole premise of this film is right at the off the hop you find out she killed herself you don't really know how um people allude to different ways but she's killed herself and essentially this whole film um is sort of his the way he deals with the concept of she was his whole world uh, you don't know much about her, but you could tell she was his whole world. And he's this sort of um, 
sort of this web genius, right? He does like websites and web security and stuff. And he just starts falling apart. And essentially he finds a letter that she's written for him under his pillow in an envelope. And um, he, he doesn't want to open it. And the whole film is his internal struggle of, will I open this or not? And all the while he discovers the concept of huffing gas. So essentially the premise of the film is he begins huffing gasoline and starts this downward spiral of just like any way he can sniffing gasoline to a point where he begins collecting uh, model planes just for the premise of sniffing model plane fuel because it's a better high. And that is essentially the entire premise of this movie, him struggling with his wife killing herself and him huffing gas. Um, and you get various really cool scenes like this where he goes to a model plane show and is just... Is this is just, unbelievable. This list is the best list we've yeah. ever done. Just, <laughs> I'm so happy. He is, yeah, it's very romantic. He is just disheveled out of it, goes and swims in the lake right in the middle of this model plane show where they're, where they're racing model boats and just interrupts the entire race when they're like, you can't do this. He's like, I'm just swimming. I'm just swimming. Like, it's just a mess. And um, But it's just a showcase for Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, obviously, this was sort of in his prime 2002, and um, he was just going up, up, up. And this is one of those films that a lot of people don't really, really know about, right? Um, I mean, I'm sure he has a, he has got a lot of films out there that people don't really know about because, you know, he was that kind of guy, do a big one, do a small one. Um, but uh, that's, this is one I can't, I can't forget. And I was happy to, re to rewatch it because it, it was much more uh, powerful. And Kathy Bates plays a pretty big role in that, too. She's uh, his mother-in-law, right? The mother of his uh, his deceased wife. So it's pretty. So there's a, they're the two big names. Uh, not a big cast, but a powerful uh, message. So that is my number three. Love, Liza. Cool. Have not seen that. I haven't. This I haven't either. I'm so happy we have so four different <laughs> movies. This is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm so, I love this. Um, my number two. We're on our number two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this was a movie that was going to be on my list. I was just going to make it an honorable mention. I'd never seen it before. I I mean, to this point, pretty much refused to ever watch it. Um, what? <laughs> what? I, I can't believe where this is going. You, you've never... So have you seen this movie before you, this? Just the trailer. This movie? Just I watched the trailer. it yesterday. <laughs> For the first time yesterday. That's valid. This is awesome. I've this had is things awesome. Go on my list that I watched just. You've before. never seen Love Don't Cost a Thing till yesterday. <laughs> Love actually. Love actually. No, I, that's what I actually think it might be. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just because it had love in the title. It's also a Best Picture winner. So in in my life, I will eventually watch all the Best Picture movies, and you know this is on that list. But it was going to be like maybe the very last one I ever watched because, like I said, it, for a long time I was just refused to watch it because. Are you giving us a Weinstein movie? <laughs> oh, love, oh, yeah. Is it is it the Love Bug? The Love Bug? Nope. Did that one Best, best Picture? picture? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. This made my honorables if it's the one I'm thinking of. No, uh, it is Shakespeare in Love. Oh, oh. Best, yeah, <laughs> See? exactly. It's really that's, good. You guys are dumb. It's really. I've good. seen it in the theater. Known. Yeah, I did too. I just saw it in theater. I saw it in theater. Not in theater. Same. Yeah. Now, yeah, this, Rome, is a lot. Rome, this Rome. movie's a lot. Yeah, because it's one of those rom-com movies. Of course, grown. It's probably just a degree above being a TV movie, mm -hmm. as far as you know, like costumes and sets and stuff. It really takes place in just that one theater mm -hmm. for the most part. Yeah. Um, the acting is you know pretty good. Ben Affleck shows up being Ben Affleck of That's fifteen insane. of the fifteen hundred. Um, but I did enjoy this movie. It is funny. Best picture? Absolutely not. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I hated it. Against Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And Weinstein, this was P. Never. And again, this is Apex Mountain. Weinstein put all his power, all his money behind that. He bought yeah. it, and that's fine. But yeah. the, he, this movie, this was bought yeah. by his power. It's and, not. It's not fine. Yeah, yeah it and sucks. and it was said. I think they did like a, a <laughs> poll between like Academy members. If they had a second chance, they wouldn't have made it Best Picture. Yeah, and it's probably on the list of the worst. Best picture movies of all time. Yeah. It doesn't crash. mean it's not a bad movie. I did enjoy. It. I laughed. It's cute. Um, there it's essentially William Shakespeare living out the life of Romeo and Juliet as he writes Romeo and Juliet. It becomes, you know, uh Gwyneth Paltrow becomes his muse and she's sneaking in to be an actor. She wants to play Romeo in his play, and uh, you know, he uh lets her and then becomes it kind of becomes a B plot of women in theater that can't happen. 
But uh, uh, it's got Jeffrey Rush, who is hilarious. He's not bad in any movies ever in. Colin Firth is pretty good to the point that uh, one uh, a member of the royal family uh, was going to be named Duke of something. And after he saw this movie, he was like, no, I want to be the Earl of Wessex. I want to take that title that Colin Firth had because he really liked his performance. So he went to the Queen. He's like, can I have that title? And it was, it's, uh, it's the Queen's youngest son, Prince Edward. It's like, okay, here you're now, you know, hits him with the sword. Now you're the Earl of Wessex. He goes, yes. Now so, I'm Lord West. <laughs> and he gets to play out the fantasy of being his favorite movie character or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, best picture by no means, but it had love in the title. It did win best picture. So I wanted to watch it. And when I did, I was like, you know what? It's not as bad as I thought it would have been, you know, my entire life. <laughs> I could have told you that. And, and yeah. of course would never be on any other list except this one. That's movies fair. with love in the title. That's fair. I just am confused as to why it's not four or five. So what? Oh man. Okay. What's it was going to be five? honorable mention. That's I was going to put his honorable mention too, but I just didn't re I haven't watched it in like 13 years, maybe like 2002. And I was going to put it, I didn't. So I'm glad it got on today. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it once in theaters and that's enough for me. <laughs> but uh, Mike, you said you 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 have seen this, right? Yeah, my girlfriend at the time made me go. The same reason I saw Titanic in the theater, and Titanic I at least went and saw a second time. It this rules. this this I've never watched again. Yeah, <laughs> so, when you said if there was ever going to be a list of movies you never seen, I was like, do I have it? I wonder. Yeah, no, <laughs> I've seen it. So now, oh, great. There, that, yeah, there goes Way that. There goes that. Yeah. <laughs> Pick the movie he has, he's seen. Uh, I, I'm gonna guess you haven't seen my number two. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen I it. I love this. I'm so, so excited. Uh, my number two is from a director I was saying before we started recording there, as by a director who um, has got a distinct style, and he's one of those directors that um, is very divisive, where um, you either really, really are into his movies or you think they're pretentious, like artsy fartsy stuff. Uh, and I'm talking about Jim Jarmusch. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, my, the movie I picked is from 2013 and it is Only Lovers Left Alive. Uh, and this oh, is one yeah. of my favorites. This is one of my favorites of his. This is uh, uh, Tilda Swinton and Tom Hiddleston, uh, Hindleston, uh, as. Uh, um, a pair of vampires and even though these are vampires this is not a uh, this is not a horror movie at all like uh zero percent horror movie despite them being vampires uh it is a character study on um two uh basically immortals right they're vampires so they've lived for hundreds of years that are uh have been together for hundreds of years uh and it kind of uh delves into what's keeping them going like what is driving them to continue to live and what's driving them to continue to be together as a couple. And so it's, it, it's a, it's a romantic movie. And so like the, the two of them have long discussions and there's like a lot of great dialogue. Um, uh, Tom Hiddleston and their, and their names are Adam and Eve. So ha ha ha, you know, uh, Adam and Eve, thing. but uh, they, um, they're separated at the beginning of the movie. Uh, she is in uh, Tunisia, I think it is. And he is in Detroit and he is a musician, a very a famous musician who is a recluse. Uh, he's never shown himself in public, but people love his music and are like trying to find him. And so he's living in this like rundown house and the outskirts of Detroit. And it actually is filmed in Detroit. And there's lots of like actual Detroit landmarks, which I love. Obviously, is one of the main reasons I love it. Uh, and I through interviews, I, I found out that um uh, Jim Jim Jarmusch is from Ohio, and he holds great reverence for Detroit, uh, and it's a city that he always loved. His I guess his parents uh, would go take him to concerts and stuff there when he was younger, and he had this really great reverence for Detroit. So that anytime you have a movie that's set in Detroit and is actually filmed in Detroit, uh, you already have me uh, at that. Uh, so uh, this movie, they are super cool looking in this movie. They have like he wanted to do have them have like wild hair, and I guess I was reading that. Uh, their their wigs that they made for them. He wanted them to look like wild animals, so th they actually have 
uh, their wigs are made out of like human hair and like animal hair, animal like things sure. like I think hers is like yak hair or something like. But they look amazing. They look uh, like really cool looking. Uh, Tilda Swinton is kind of a like a weird looking woman, but she's like attractive. But she's kind of strange looking. She is extra hot in this. I really really like the way she looks in this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say she looks like a skeleton. Oh man, I I I really dig her in this, and so uh, Jim Jarmusch is a very like he's he his movies really center around uh are very musical films. Like he's a musician himself, and which is one of the reasons why I really love his films is because they he's a very musical director, and uh, so it, there's a lot of music in here. Like he lives in this. Adam lives in this like a uh, broken down house, but it's like filled with like vintage guitars and vintage like stereo gear and like all this stuff. And he just records music. Uh, Anton Yelchin is in here and uh, Mia. I never, I can never say her name. <laughs> Wysik, Wysikowski, Wysikowski or whatever her name is. Uh, Anton Yelchin is a guy who gets him stuff. He, he like gets him his guitars. He gets him anything he needs, right? Because he's a recluse. Uh, and so he's a human. Uh, we, uh, Mia is uh, another vampire that tracks them down. Uh, he, she's like related, like vampire-ish to Tilda Hint, uh, Swinton. And, but she's crazy. And like, it leads to all kinds of like really bad stuff that happens later on in the film. And it kind of drives like Fright fun. Night. Is this no. perfect with Fright Night? Antoine Zero. Yelchin? Zero is zero percent like Fright Night. Like I said, it's not a horror movie at all. Yeah, uh, but it's it's the this is a pretty funny scene of Anton Yelchin. Uh, like he they're out checking out this band and he's like trying to be cool, like he's trying to be cool like them, right? And he's like trying to fit in. They're 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 kind of just laughing at him, but not really like making fun of him. They're kind of just like, oh, that's cute. And it also has John Hurt as this older vampire, and he actually is a historical uh uh figure and i won't say who he is because they kind of reveal it uh and he uh it's pretty funny like the whole thing but he he's in tunisia and he uh uh there's a another plot point that goes along with john hurt uh but they one of the other cool things i like is that they they don't attack people they don't uh, drink people's blood what they have they have um Tom Hiddleston has a, an agreement with the local hospital, uh, one of the doctors there, who's played by Jeffrey Wright. And so he shows up and he like gives that. them whole blood. Yeah, and he's Jeffrey Wright's great. And so Tom Hiddleston shows up in this ridiculous like doctor's outfit with like a mask over his face and like the 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 doctor's like hat and all this stuff. And he has like a, a, stethos a stethoscope around his neck. And so, like, then he gets the blood, brings it back, and they can feed or whatever. But he's the top. one thing is like uh, Jeffrey Wright's like just so you know for next time that uh, stethoscope that you have there probably hasn't been used in probably two hundred years. So <laughs> he's got this like antique stethoscope because he doesn't know any better. Like that's sure. the thing. But uh, anyway, that uh, it's it's a it's a beautiful film. Again, like uh, like I said, it's about. Um, you know what it means to be immortal, and what it means to. Um... Don't mind me. He's not immortal. His battery isn't immortal. That's his ridiculous. battery's not. Uh... What it what it means to be <laughs> immortal, and what it means to be together, and like to, and so uh, I, I forgot to mention too. Tom Hiddleston is kind of we weary of life. And he's kind of like, um, as you he's, would he's be. Kind, He's he, yeah he's kind of tired of stuff he's tired of like the grind and like he's tired of like people hounding him because of his music and uh, so he's kind of like thinking of ending it and he actually gets Anton Yelchin to give him make him uh, get him a, a wooden bullet he has a wooden bullet made and uh, so uh, Tilda Swinton kind of travels across uh, across the world from Tunisia to, to Detroit to like. Um, is it like you know, Kurt Cobain parallels? Like, is he a depressed musician hold up no. thinking about ending things with the bull? Like, is that kind of the parallel? You just, it sounded like that's what you just made. Okay. But it's not Kurt okay. Cobain. Okay. But no, uh, it, it's good. Anyway. Yeah. I really, I, re it's one of the, one of those films I really, really like. Uh, it's got great music. Uh, and it's just, it's a beautiful film. And it's like, I like it because it's very uh, unique vampire film it's not like any other vampire film you've seen uh the, the way they talk to each other about like their life their, their 
you know, they've lived for hundreds of years, but they don't talk to it like oh, I've seen kings and queens fall over the centuries. It's just like, like you and I talk, you're talking about our past, like, you know, oh, you remember when that happened, you know, 200 years ago? And anyway, it's it's good. It's really good. Anyway, that's 2013 Only Lovers Left Alive. Cool. Okay, we'll switch things up. I'll go to my number two here. So the funny thing is when we were talking about if um, my number two is probably going to be one of the biggest films on the list. So it's interesting if Mike hasn't seen it because I remember this movie came out and it's uh, one of the biggest movies of the year. And uh, I've simply enough, I'm going with 2011's Crazy Stupid mm -hmm. Love. So at the time, Steve Carell, biggest name in television. He's teaming up with Ryan Gosling, who's a star. This movie's turning him into a mega star. Uh, basically what it is, again, it's just a very fun uh, romantic comedy where show different facets of love and what love means. So in this, Julianne Moore and Steve Carell play uh, a married couple who are on the outs. She had an affair. Their love has died. Their passion has died uh, to the point where he's kind of aimless. He, he's, he's in a rut. He doesn't know what to do. So he meets super cool guy, super cool guy, Ryan Gosling. Gosling kind of uh, feels bad for him. You get a little bit of the backstory. He takes him under his wing. And it's 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 a buddy film. Um, there's about six subplots going on right now between him dating Emma Stone, her relationship with Ju Moore and Gosling, Carell, Carell with the son's teacher and this. And it just makes for like a really fun Again, late watch, neat, and at the time, really smart. I remember seeing him being like, this is really clever. This is really smart, and there's a ton of heart behind a movie like this. Uh, like I said, it's, it's you know, the, the scenes of Gosling and Carell shopping and Gosling's picking out suits and fashioning him up. Needless to say, they speak to me. I see that, and I go, that's incredible. I can watch this all day. Give me this. Give me a 10-episode Netflix show. Three episodes are spent just at just had our like Abercrombie and RW and go. But with that, so it just makes a really fun uh, story throughout. And ultimately once the bows are all tied up, uh, each character has a great arc where they begin the film and where they end the film at or in different roles. Uh, like I said, it was a big movie at the time and it made Ryan Gosling an even bigger star <laughs> if they turned into that romantic comedy crowd. So uh, just like my number three, a very harmless movie, a very light watch, I go with uh, Crazy Stupid Love is my number two. And a quite entertaining little plot twist somewhere towards the middle to end. Yeah, like that's what I say. There's clever. Like you get, mm -hmm. once you uncover, like at the point there's there's five, six different subplots on love and this and, and how they all connect. And you see how some characters correct, connect and Tomei. And like we said, the one big twist with the, the one big scene. And you see where Julianne Moore's had an affair with Kevin Bacon, of all people, when he shows up. That scene's kind of like batshit zany because there's like 18 different things going on all at once. And like all the cards are falling. And it makes like a very classic style Hollywood film where, you know, hijinks ensue. And you're like, but again, it's done with a really like, heartwarming and clever coat of paint so it separates it from from like different rom-coms and this movie could have been a really 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 different movie and like i said it's just you look at it and you're like it's done really well and really sharp and maybe it is the star power of Carell turning into a leading man at the time and gosling being a superstar that make this movie from like a netflix hbo film to like an actual like there's a reason why this movie made a ton of money at the box office so my number two Great. Yep, not bad. It though, so I knew I knew yeah. you'd see that. Well, you know, my wife made me watch it. Generally, yeah. <laughs> someone has made me watch it. But this is peak has, Corral not, at I've like peak office. You haven't seen it? Okay. It's, no. it's, like it. Yeah, you would you would like it. It's entertaining. But enough, like, yeah. and even then the set the like, John Carroll Lynch plays like the neighbor, oh. and like Kevin Bacon has his part, and Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei. I do like John Carroll Lynch. Movie. But like, yeah, like there's you watch it and there's like two or three other people, and you're just like like, I think the boyfriend is Josh Groban. It's it's just like there's a lot of people in this movie. Okay, yeah, you're going the wrong way. You're yeah. going the wrong way. Yeah, you're not, you're not, <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're more John Carroll Lynch yeah. and less, less Josh Groban. Groban. It's yeah. fun, John Carroll Lynch, and not child, like child murderer John Carroll Lynch. Fun, John <laughs> either Carroll way, either way, Drew, I'm, I'm down with Drew Carey. And uh, <laughs> can we start like a meter where we measure things on Lynch versus Groban? Oh. Like, this is like you know, the Lynch is here and the Groban's there. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, um, okay, number twos. So when this list came up, I'm like, all right, how can I twist this on its head somehow? What can I do? 
And in true, as you were talking about, this whole concept of the list is in true Mac Flash fashion, picking, uh, you know, titles uh, with the word love in them. I thought, okay, well, I don't want to just pick titles, obviously, with the word love in them. So I went, I looked up the list of, you know, films with love in them. And and uh, and when you search that in things like IMDb, it does, doesn't just show you uh, the word love. It shows you words that contain the word love. So I thought this one's perfect. 2016, uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Because if you look oh, inside awesome. the middle that's of the word awesome. Cloverfield, that's awesome. I'm really happy you did this. You will find the word love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a lot to say about this film. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I love it. I love there it. There was, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, this movie, I mean, and this is one of those films where, yeah, a lot of people have a lot to say. First of all, I love. Love, 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 love that poster. The concept of because they're mm -hmm. underground, right? And the way they did that poster. But pre premise-wise, uh, for for those who don't know, essentially a woman leaves her husband, is what you find out at the beginning of the film, gets in her car. You don't know where she's going. You don't really know what's happened. He calls her. She kind of hangs up on him. Boom, she gets into an accident. That's all within the first, like, five minutes. And then the she wakes up. The voice of Bradley up. Cooper. Yeah, absolutely. Ben. <laughs> Bradley, Bradley Cooper as Ben. Um, you hear him for, like, what? Like, a couple sentences. It was a favor to JJ. Yeah. 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 Continue. Yeah. And um, so, uh, anyways, she gets into this accident um, and then wakes up, you know, like the scene cuts and she wakes up essentially chained into a, in a basement. And that's essentially sort of the premise of the film. What I loved about this film was that this was the follow up or the companion film or however they touted it at the time to Cloverfield, right? Cloverfield came out, made a whole bunch of money. And then People didn't really know what to do with this film. They're like, is this a sequel? Is this going to be what with the monsters? What's going to happen? And 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 everyone wondered. And um, I love the tagline, even monsters come in many for forms. So you watch this movie, which, by the way, stars uh, my girl there, Ramona Flowers. Come on now. Yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And John Goodman, like killing it. Right. John, John Goodman. Goodman, Goodman, Goodman got 11. legitimate Oscar buzz for oh, this film and he like, deserved it. He got yeah. Oscar buzz terrifying he was terrifying yes. and and like just plays it perfectly but i mean that man isn't is an actor right yeah. and so so anyways you got the two of them in here and it's sort of uh what you're trying to basically trying to figure out what's going on he claims that there's some sort of apocalyptic sort of scenario that's occurred you the whole time as a, a, a as a an audience member are like wait where's the monsters what's happening is this this isn't like cloverfield he's claiming there's some sort of apocalyptic thing if you go up there there's this gas it'll melt your skin off blah 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 you don't really know what's going on. And it's just basically sort of a psychological thriller where she's chained to the basement. You find out there's another person down there and you can't quite figure out at first if he was also chained or he's there of his own free will. And you start piecing things together and um, a lot of chaos ensues. And then again, uh, another speaking of twists, uh, big twist sort of towards the end where you go, oh, wow, crazy. And I don't want to give that away because if you haven't seen it, it's like a in my opinion, a really big one that makes you go, oh, that's perfect. And I just yeah. love the way this film has so little to do with Cloverfield, but in ways has so much to do with Cloverfield. Like, uh, with, I don't want to give too much away. But th there was no way I wasn't sneaking this on there that's because funny. it had the word love inside of it. So <laughs> there love you it. go. That's, that's, wow, it's uh, cool. I just saw today, they just announced today or maybe yesterday, that they're actually making a legit cloverfield sequel like a, the, and they're, they're like yeah, for, yeah they're like for reals this time guys they, they did the stupid paradox like two years ago it was garbage a cool idea and the movie was terrible and the movie was so bad the movie was so bad but they're they're like okay for reals this time guys <laughs> is for reals mm -hmm. a cloverfield sequel so but i mean i love that this isn't like and i love yeah, that this film, yeah. if, if cloverfield didn't exist other than the fact that that word is in this title, this movie is its own movie. Like it could exist oh, totally. from beginning well, to I end. I love the, the, I love the, to me, I love the hype. I love the hype of like the marketing of it. And I love that it, you know, it, it kind of does, it kind of does <laughs> tie to it. So we, Oh, please, please. Finish. I'm sorry. I think you're done. No, no. And then that, but that's it. Like it, I love that, that they can hype it up like that and they'll definitely get me to watch it. And like that paradox, uh, even as bad as it was, it, this new one, uh, if they hype me up with again, I'll I'll be a sucker and fall for it again. And I'm like, Cloverfield 2? All right. Sign me up. Yeah, the only thing I remember, I saw this movie twice when it came out because I worked at the theater at the time. I think I watched it twice while I was there. And we all like our films, and I know we all have very good taste when it comes to it. I just always felt 
that the first like two and a half acts of that movie are like perfect. Mm -hmm. And then the final 20 minutes of that movie is like almost studio interference where it becomes a little bit different. I got to go back and see it if I like it again as much. I like, but I remember at the end, once she like the things go start dominoes start falling, I remember being like, Oh, I kind of just wish the movie was going the path that I, it was. Yeah, going. I think, I think if they had kept everything the way it is, but sort of made the ending a little more like signs kind of end, yes, or know? World War Z, I yeah. would have wanted a really smaller yeah. style, yeah, yeah, ending. but same idea. I know what you mean, I know what you mean yeah. for sure. Um, but I still appreciate that it was like, oh, this isn't just what it seems. Because the whole yeah. time you're going, is this, isn't yes, it? Yeah, know. then that's what's great about it is you don't know. <laughs> it, like, is this, mm -hmm. you you know that John Goodman's crazy, but is he, like, is he lying? Is he, is, yeah. he, like, is it legit? Is he not Or legit? is he, like, is that's the like, thing too. Or yeah. is he You don't know, right up until the end. Heart. But the same thing is he's a country bumpkin who can't express and he yeah. doesn't know he's in this world. So he's just angry. Yeah. But yeah. It, like, she's yeah. like, what are you, what are you not understanding? And it's 350 pounds of John Goodman. Like, shut, 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 yeah. drop Donnie. <laughs> Your phone's <laughs> over the line. Yeah. Um, so yes, it, it's, it's out of your element. great. You're yeah. out of your element. Yeah, it's actually, <laughs> she, she could have said that to her. Yeah, exactly. In that movie. You're out of your element. Um, You're out of your element, John Gallagher Jr. <laughs> That was the other guy. Emmett, from the Emmett, newsroom. That's, that's Emmett, yeah. 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 That's funny. Okay. We're making great time. Honorable Honorables. 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 Yeah. Is that what Honorable <laughs> mention? I also want to throw these tickers up, remind everybody to play the Mac Flash quickie. Um, it's gonna be an interesting quickie. <laughs> we're like, we're can we please call ready. it? Can we please call it the love quickie? Just like <laughs> that's great. That's yes. really fun. Yes, we okay. can. Okay. Uh, my honorable mentions were actually two movies that were on my list before I watched two other movies. <laughs> but <laughs> I really enjoy them, but they're not the best. But they are in the rom com style and they all have love in the title. First one, Addicted to Love. Really? Yeah. Oh, I've never, yeah, okay. It's a cute movie. Um, and Love Potion number nine. I knew you'd have that. It's great. Good old Tate Donovan. <laughs> All right, uh, my honorable mentions. I really, I actually wanted to talk about this one, but I'm not going to. I saw this in theater, and it is from 2000, Love and Basketball, and you thought would be all it's about it. It's my number that. six. It's my number six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I, it's, it's a fantastic film. Uh, and my other one is one that just came out, and I, I wanted to give it some love to get you guys to watch it. It's Love and Monsters, Dylan O'Brien. Uh, and it's it's really good. It's a monster. It's, it's a monster mill monster movie, but it's got a lot of heart, and it's uh it's really really good. I just watched it. And it's the same guy who wrote uh the babysitter. He wrote um uh another one that just came out spontaneous uh and a couple other like really big movies that just it, came out last few years. Is that the tagline? A monster movie with a lot of heart. Is that? That's <laughs> kind of like, uh, but like it's it's like a love story. But like there's like you know giant crabs and all kinds of crazy stuff that's done and that like legitimately like and you guys know i love monster movies but it's legitimately good like i really really like it so check it out loving monsters okay my two honorable mentions we got here uh i was talking about a movie with a weird director you would never assume and that's sam raimi's for the love right. of oh, the yeah. game <laughs> sam raimi go. did this movie right before spider-man and you're like yeah. that's weird and i'm so glad i set him up he knocks him down other bond fan i went with uh from russia with love the second sean connery is james bond outing so uh we have both james bond films on there i figured you guys would <laughs> <laughs> all right so Trying not to double up here. We have, um, well, this film makes me crack up. Uh, slap at the bass. I love you, man. I do, that yeah. I do. That, that movie is a riot. Paul Rudd can't go wrong. And um, in true romance, uh, uh, the theme of romance here, the lovely bones. Um, that's a <laughs> nice. Uh, not romantic at all. Not but the lovely bones. Yeah. Lovely bones. So I I do nothing about it. I saw that movie. There's so much bad shit stuff behind the scenes on that movie. I'm obsessed. I just want to talk about this. Uh, Gosling was the dad. Gained like 50 pounds of weight. Um, and then who did the who directed it? Guillermo. 
No, that's a Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson, yeah. Peter Jackson, the other, yeah. So, because they were on the, and Peter Jackson's like, I never wanted you to gain this weight. You're fired. And then replaced him with Wahlberg. Insane. Stanley Tucci as well. <laughs> Unbelievable Stanley Tucci performance in The Lovely Bones. So, I saw that was like, Stanley Tucci's <laughs> unbelievable. So, oh, he's good. Yeah. All right. All right. Number that ones. Number ones. Okay. My number one, similar to Shakespeare in Love, was a movie I watched for the first time yesterday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Have you made first time? This is insane. <laughs> yeah. This is insane. This is crazy. Um, this is crazy. And I got an idea for a topic now, uh, by the way, off camera later. Just ask me. Okay. Go <laughs> um, it, uh, it's also a huge, it was a, it's a big deal of a movie, especially uh, when it came out. It was a box office smash. It was nominated for seven Oscars, only won one because it was up against stuff like Patton in 1970. Mm, okay. Uh, my number one is a lo- of Love Story. Oh, yeah. Sing. Yeah. It's on a lot of lists. Ali McGreal, Ali McGraw, and Ryan O'Neill uh, play, you know, college kids. They meet in college. The movie. It spans over like five years, but it's only an hour and a half long. The movie, uh, they do their whole uh, whole lives in that time. <clears throat> they meet in college. Uh, they uh, date for a while. He enters, He's uh, like a, a millionaire son, so he's got everything and really doesn't want it. He wants to be out of his father's shadow and stuff. She's from like a working class uh, town, and uh, he uh, really doesn't like it's. There's a story, there's a backstory between him and his father that really doesn't get flushed out too much. He uh, he brings her home uh, to meet the parents, and uh, he's just immediately like, why don't you like her? And they're really not conveying that kind of a sentiment. Like, we don't hate her. She's a very nice young lady. But he's but uh, Ryan O'Neill's kind of like guilty. He's like, no, you don't like her because she's from the wrong part of town. But you know what? doesn't matter. I'm going to marry her anyways. They get married. She's very much like a, a a piss taker. She makes fun of him. She, you know, punches him in the arm a lot. She calls him preppy. They're from very different, uh, you know, ways of life. Stuff like that. I'm sorry. Ah, moving on. Uh, they get married. They decide they're going to start a family. And that's when the bad news comes in that she's sick. And uh, she's got uh, leukemia. And by the end of, at the end of the movie, she dies. And... I don't know. I mean, for everybody, I'm sure who's seen this movie, just Niagara Falls. Absolute tears all over the place. It's one of my mom's favorite movies. She loves Ryan O'Neill. And uh, yeah, if I had saw this, you know, back in 1970, I was like, this should be best picture. And I love Patton. Patton won best picture. And uh, George C. Scott won best actor. And he refused that year. And I was like, Ryan O'Neill could have won it then. I was so (laughs) pissed off when I read that. He was great in this movie. You should just give it to him. Love Story is an absolute, you know, classic that becomes number one. And I, seriously, I watched it for the first time yesterday. It is really good. Awesome. good. I, don't, I saw it on the list and was like, oh, but <laughs> I knew oh. Ryan O'Neill. I knew Ryan O'Neill more because he is uh, Tatum's dad, right? Right. So I was yep. like, oh, okay. That's how I've ever known him. I feel like he was course corrected by Warren Beatty. They kind of like <laughs> look alike. It did kind of the same film. So like Beatty kind of stole his thunder, which certainly sounds like it. But yeah, showed up on the list. I know nothing about it though. Oh, Didn't great. know she died. I, Thank you. I, I, I think I think I watched <laughs> it when care. in my late teens or like early twenties, and it was a little too much for me at the time. Like it was like I I, I appreciated for like how good it was, but it was like not what I like. Obviously, you're I'm a teen, right? I want to like enjoy myself, but I want to sit there and cry my eyes out and like <laughs> have to deal with like real life things right but uh no it's very good it was a very good movie but i i think it was like i think of, i would enjoy it a lot more now than i would have back then right because i'd like get a lot more perspective did she ever go on who's ali mcgraw what else did she go on to did she do she's in a else? lot uh um, ali mcgraw's in uh the um uh what's the one they got uh i'm trying to think of what the name is that, i mean, that, i'm no, the uh, Alec Baldwin and and um, Kim Basinger did this the remake. Real McCoy. No, uh, is that what? I think so. Is that what they did? Remake I don't, I'll tell you, look, I just saw him. Like that sounds like a big movie. Like they Al were McGraw, young Al McGraw's in, 90, in a lot of movies. Like, uh, Alan McGraw's McGraw in. I don't know. He'll never got big, but cool. I'll take a look. I'll watch it. Yeah. All right, my number one. 
Should I move? Do you guys have the same number one? Do you guys just want to double up? Should, I'm being serious. Should I just? <laughs> no, this is going to be some Ryan, weird horror you, movie. No, 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 no. Is Scott, you already, be my, you, already, you already told me what my number one is. Yeah, I'm, I'm ashamed that you forgot already. You okay. already guessed my number one. I thought so. I thought it was his number one, too. No. No, you oh. guessed it in the, the chat. I'm wow. Yeah. Okay. So well, I'm talking about him. I thought he had no. the same one. No. Okay. Uh so let's find out. <laughs> uh so there's two things, two kind of movies I really like. Uh horror movies and movies about music. And so a movie movie came out in 2014, directed by Paul uh Bill Pollard about a band that I really like, about a gentleman that I really like, and his name is Brian Wilson. Oh, I forgot. I did. And right. there's a movie called Love and Mercy, which uh, is all about the life and genius of Brian Wilson. Uh, and so what I like about this movie a lot is uh, it's a dual role uh, with Paul Dano playing Brian Wilson, young Brian Wilson from the 60s, and John Cusack playing old, uh, older Brian Wilson uh, in the 80s. Uh, and you kind of get the two different sides of it. Uh, and so what uh and here's brian here's uh them playing live and so at all the the 60s brian uh pet shop uh sorry <laughs> the 60s uh stuff revolves around the recording of to me one of the greatest if not the greatest american rock album of all time and that is beach boys pet sounds i love pet sounds it's one of my favorite albums and so to watch brian wilson in the studio uh orchestrating the recording of uh of pet sounds is unbelievable it's like i was watching it i was giddy because i was like uh him going through it and he's uh, he, uh in the studio they have uh he had the wrecking crew which is one of the like famous uh studio bands uh recording the album and they have obviously people playing the wrecking crew but uh mm -hmm. it, just him you know his genius at work in the studio and it was really neat and you see him behind the board there just were directing things and kind of working things and so they kind of get into um what drove him and one of the things that drove him was the beatles obviously uh and they had a a, a rivalry that was uh, like a friendly rivalry between the beach boys and the beatles uh the beatles did a lot of things took a lot of things from the beach boys like harmony a lot of the harmonies and the way they did things and then vice versa uh when the beatles did some st experimenting it drove brian wilson to start uh experimenting and what ended up being uh pet sounds uh and so uh, one of the other things that i love too is they uh r.i.p phil specter he just died uh last week or a week a week and a half ago uh, that was one of the huge influences on Brian Wilson. Uh, the the whole wall of sound and the the, the uh, orchestra sound uh, that uh, Phil Spector incorporated. And so, like he, uh, it shows that driving into it. Uh, they reenact uh, the Sloop John B music video in this, which I Sloop John, Sloop John B is my favorite Beach Boys song. I love that. Uh, and so then it, it flashes back to that to to him in the 80s and he's kind of burnt out uh he's kind of a shell of a man uh he's not in the beach boys they had a major falling out and he meets this uh car dealer uh, uh played by elizabeth banks and he kind of falls for her and they have a kind of a mute meet cute uh like matt said uh called it and so they uh he she kind of like brings him trying to bring brings him back to reality and so there's brian wilson the real brian wilson with uh the crew there and so they they get into a lot of the the history of the band uh bill camp plays uh who i love i love bill camp he plays murray wilson who's uh the beach boy's father uh the, the three boys and he's a total tool bag uh they end up he was their manager he then up firing him because he was such a loser uh and like he was trying to control them uh and then um they have mike love who's the other major guy in the beach boys it's the cousin of the wilsons he's like the singer in the band like the main singer of the beach boys and there's a huge thing between brian wilson and mike love and mike love is a complete jackhole i can't stand that guy uh he ruined the beach boys at the when so when uh brian wilson wanted to do the experimental stuff uh mike love just wanted to continue 
the same old, same old Beach Boys. And there's a quote, there's a line in there that Brian's like, I can't keep writing songs about being on the beach and surfing. We don't even surf. Like, we, surfers hate us. Right? And so, like, <laughs> and Mike Love's just like, I, I just want to keep doing the same thing, right? And so they have a big fight. And anyway, it, I I really love the Beach Boys. I really love that the the dynamic uh, that that's going there. Um, one of the things that's great about it too is uh, it, 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 even though you know it makes Mike love and and his dad to be an asshole because they are assholes, uh, it also shows that Brian Wilson had some major major mental health issues. And both in the the '60s stuff and the '80s stuff, he has a lot of really really um, uh, uh, bad mental health issues. And so they they show that the struggles that he had and how it affects the band, right? And so it's not it's not just oh Brian Wilson has these crazy ideas and we're just going to toss them out uh, toss them out. Right, the, he actually was legit. You know, uh, had some major health problems that you know kind of drove himself out as well. So I, I really like the they 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 do that. And they show him having episodes and stuff like that. Where uh, there's a reason. It's not just you know creative differences. It's like he is legitimately um, had had some major major problems. But anyway, I uh, I love the Beach Boys. I love this movie because it's all about. Brian Wilson. I love Lamp. I love Lamp. <laughs> love and cool. Mercy. Yeah, I feel like I remember that movie. I don't know if I've seen it. And it's I've seen bits. I've seen the Elizabeth Banks stuff. And I remember like Dano. I, I, that's when I was like, he does he There Will it. Be Blood. He does this. And yeah. then he follows that up. Well, he does Little Miss Sunshine. Then and but then he follows this up with Prisoners. And you're just like, oh, this dude's this dude's the next Jill Hall. This dude's gonna be like a mega star by 35. And I mean he's going that path and he's still more than enough time, but yeah, versatile as hell. Like this yeah. is one where he doesn't have to like get dirty and shout and scream and yeah, he does. You know. He does. He, he does. Angry, he does course, this, but, but like he, he doesn't have to play like button. brooding and like prisoners, yeah. Paul Dano, but, which is what I yeah, imagine Paul Dano to be like. John, John like John this thing, like John Cusack is okay in this, but Paul Dano as young Brian Wilson is unbelievable. Like he's really, really good, especially when he's really struggling. Uh, they a uh, perfect casting. Uh, I really like that. But yeah. Cool. yeah, I forgot. I forgot we did talk about that. So I was thinking more. <laughs> well, of it. I've been about thinking about his like, movie all day. Mike, so. uh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Mike's not gonna have a movie about no, the Beach Boys. I forgot all about that. <laughs> Just wait till well, I we start do know what it is. Love Actually, yeah, Love Actually. <laughs> I know you're like waiting for Scott expensive. to get done. <laughs> okay i'm gonna hit up uh so i don't even really know how to start this uh my number one i just knew it would be my number one uh i think it's really criminally underrated this movie uh we're gonna talk about why i think there's so much more like subtext to it and like how much more important i actually think this movie is and i'm gonna go with 2011's love and other drugs with jake gyllenhaal and anne hathaway so again, largely forgettable in like both of their filmographies. They go on to do much more important stuff. Uh, Jake does a plethora of Academy Award nominated films and Anne Hathaway wins for Les Mis a few years later. But you will see a movie like this and, and it's almost two movies in one. So the first hour of it, Jake Hall plays this incredibly charming, incredibly handsome like pharmaceutical sales rep. And as I'm watching this movie, I've been in sales, been in commission sales my whole life. And you see Jake and he's doing like tricks. He lights the match and he's trying to talk about it before he burns his hand to get his like elevator pitch off. And I'm like, holy shit. I feel like that's stuff that I've done or sat through uh, and had to learn or the way he charms and romances um, the secretaries to get in to see the doctors and stuff. And his relationship with Oliver Platt, I was like, oh, I feel like, you know, he's got the older veteran who's teaching them and they have a great relationship, much like when I worked for the Windsor Spitfires, I had an older mentor and we worked together and it was a lot of fun. So the first half of the movie just is like this almost like sex fueled romantic comedy kind of style thing. And it's very much a throwback to like nineties films and the fact that you have megastar male, megastar female, bring them together break them up, we'll watch them come back. And it does follow those formulas. So in the first half, Viagra comes out because it's set in the 90s and there's this and there's, like I said, a lot of like sex humor and stuff. And, and Jake, like I said, is just chugging along, just being super cool. Again, a lot of my tastes are watching cool actors do cool things and look handsome doing it. Uh, but ultimately you find out about the halfway part of the film and Hathaway suffers from like early onset Parkinson's. 
So Jake Gyllenhaal plays this like womanizer throughout. And as he meets Anne Hathaway's character who starts giving him shit, starts like matching him, uh, you know, punch for punch, dig for dig on stuff. And he realizes that uh, much like the Viagra is sweeping the nation uh, and it's not just about sex, he's finding love for this woman. And as things go on, he's not really sure how to cope with that. And then the second half of the movie, you know, he starts pouring all his attention into helping her get better from her Parkinson's. And she doesn't need all the help and she wants to do this alone. And as they break up and all this and, and then I was watching it and it's Ed Zwick and he's done some Academy Award uh, nominated films and some more important films. And I'm like, the second half of this movie is like really important. And it's like a message on like disability in relationship, which again, you see that you see a few movies, the Charlize Keanu did that one mental health uh, sort of thing, but you know, a lot of the time when you watch rom-coms, they just are dispensable and they're they're thrown out. But again, I go back to a movie like this because it does make that switch. And you're like, this is way more important than just a regular run-of-the-mill rom-com. And ultimately, as you do come back and they do kind of talk about her, the extent of her condition and how it's worsening. And is Jake prepared to, you know, for a life of what it's going to mean and things like that. Uh, like I said, it just makes for a much more important watch. There are cool actors doing cool stuff. There's a lot of comedy. Josh Gad plays this like, you know, frat bro, super horny, like dork brother. And they have some comedy bits because ultimately it is. But like I said, so my number one, which I knew, which I, you know, think has a lot, a lot of heart and a lot of charm is the uh, underrated love and other drugs. Never seen it. Sure. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it. I knew it was going to be yeah. on your list, though. Yeah, yeah. of course. I, I, but like I, actually, I said, actually Jake, own it. Don't, uh. Oh, awesome! It's like Jake, I, it's nice suits, and he's talking, and he's and Gabriel Mock plays like this rival pharmaceutical rep. So again, the first hour and a bit, you're like, oh, 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 I'm eating it up. And then, like I said, once it makes the twist, and it's Jake and Jake and and Anne Hathaway are doing a ton of heavy lifting, and like I said, he's one of my favorite actors for a reason. I would watch him in anything. Uh, and there's a reason why, you know, you see these movies and you see like an A plus actor in it and it raises it. A lot of 90s stuff and shock like that. But like I said, there's a reason why these two are, you know, he's never won an Oscar, but they are Academy Award, you know, actors. So you said directed by Ed Swick. And I was like, yeah. why do I know that? I just saw his name from something. Did he do? He did Blood Diamond. He did Defiance. He, I know that. I feel like he did Blood Diamond. Yeah. Uh, produced Shakespeare in Love. Oh, so, okay. He's one of the Oscar winners for that. Crossover. That's really funny then, man. That's awesome. Oh, sounds like I definitely There's don't want to watch this movie. Like mash, <laughs> mash up Shakespeare and love and other drugs. That's like uh, that. Centipede. Movie centipede. Movie uh, centipede. All right. Um, all right. Well, most people would put this movie on their Christmas film list. Um, I No, I'm just joking. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 2002 i like 2002 movies i like 2002 movies with philip seymour hoffman them. and if you give me a clear path to putting a paul thomas anderson film at the top of one of my lists i'm gonna take it there's no question about it um punch drunk love now punch drunk love is not paul thomas anderson's best movie i would say but um you give me uh, adam sandler being Weird, but not goofy, because we've mm -hmm. talked about this before. Uh, you know, Robin Williams, we've talked about this before with Jim Carrey. This is a prime example for Adam Sandler, um, where you have him actually being serious. Now, he's odd, but he's odd because his character is, I mean, one might even say sort of Asperger's y, right? He's got, he's very, very socially awkward. He's a plunger salesman, at least that's what it seems like he is, um, because he's, he's, talking about the new plungers he's got in and and whacking them on tables to show how strong they are he's got seven horrible sisters and he's just like socially awkward uh this image here is uh, one of the main plot points of the film he's figured out he's cracked something that apparently no one has cracked before which is that if you buy enough puddings uh this you know we've talked about this before with coupon clipping if you buy enough puddings and you individually scan each pudding cup you'll make millions of dollars in frequent flyer miles uh compared to what you've bought in pudding so he's this is one of his sort right. of things but um but the bottom line is and premise of this film is essentially he is he's just alone his sisters are always trying to set him up they're just jerks 
um, and always harassing him and telling stories about horrible things he did when he was little. Uh, and um, so he one night calls a phone sex line and doesn't even enjoy it, calls it just to talk to somebody. And eventually they take advantage of him and try to take him for all of his money. And the, the main guy behind that is sleazeball over here, Dean Trumbull. Rules in this movie. Yeah, played yeah. by Philip Seymour Hoffman. And I love, like, I mean, there's lots of good parts in this movie, but the face-off between him oh and Barry Egan, played by Adam Sandler, and just when he gets into his face and he's, what does he say? He says to him, uh, you say that's that. <laughs> like, he's basically telling him, you better tell it, say it's okay or I'm going to smash you to pieces. And I'm talking about Adam Sandler's character. And he yeah. says this, my favorite line in this movie, which makes this, and this is really the most love type film movie that I have on my list. Cause he says, I have a love in my life. It makes me stronger than anything you can imagine. And he's so like, he's doing this with his fist clenched. Like he's going to destroy <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman. And you can see it in, in Philip Seymour Hoffman's character's face. Like, Oh, this guy is a lunatic. And yeah. I don't, I don't know what I'm getting into because he basically Philip Seymour Hoffman runs the phone sex line and runs obviously these scams on people who call it where they try to shake them down for money or they'll tell their boss or their girlfriends or whoever that they call the phone sex line. And he sends out goons to go sort of shake people down. And he does not expect lunatic from Los Angeles, Barry Egan to come drive all the way to Utah and basically face off with him. Um, <laughs> but anyways, definitely an unusual uh, love story, but um I just absolutely love this. If you, if I can get a PT Anderson or a Wes Anderson or any of those to a top of a list, I will do it. And so punch drunk love 2002. So I got two 2002 films. So there you go. That's the year of love. When you, 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 you didn't, uh, you didn't mention Emily Mortimer, who's adorable. No, Emily. Wa is it Mortimer or Watson? I think it's, it's Emily Watson. Is it? I thought Emily Watson, Watson too. Oh, Emily sorry. Watson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's Emily, yeah. Watson. Emily Watson. I didn't mention her. Because she's sort of the least memorable part of this movie, oh, even though she's, she's the love she's, interest. I think she's super cute in it. She's even like, like yeah, bouncy, but yeah. yeah, yeah, she's the love interest. She's she's cute and all, but like, um, she's such a minor character considering the fact that she's such a big deal to his life. Him finding love, I found. I thought like in the end, like she was kind of not very memorable. Um, mm -hmm. But I wonder if that's sort of on purpose, right? Because he's the focus of the whole thing, really, right? I don't know. Sure. But either way. Take her or leave her. There you go. There's our list. Love. It's great. It's a great one. It's the best <laughs> love, <laughs> <ain't> love grand. <laughs> um, yeah, that's our list. Thanks, everybody, for watching. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we love you. Play the quiz. Play the love tell, quickie. Tell us your love movies, and they can be real love movies if you want. Correct. There's a bunch of people who are talking, who are, you know, saying, no, they these guys are all wrong. Here's the actual list. Well, we want to know. Throw it in the comments. Your top five movies that have the title Love in it. And if you can't find one, you can be clever like Mike and find Cloverfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, there's there's one for you right there. Cloverfield. Yeah, for sure. There's <laughs> yeah. a hundred. Google it. There's lots. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Give us your list. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, don't forget to play the quiz. Visit Mac Flash Entertainment on Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. Start a new month. Um, you can join. It's a uh, when is this coming up? This is just before Valentine's Day. Yeah, this will be yes, yep. February 9th. Yes, yes. today <laughs> is February 9th. Totally right. February just watched, 9th. It's right absolutely. Now. Oh. The yeah, Super Bowl was, was amazing. How was that oh, Super Bowl? Man. Wasn't was that crazy. Crazy. What that team during was that. There was those things that happened when the, the pass went that way. And man, Half what a quarterback duo. Wow. Wow. What a duel. Mahomes and Brady, who saw that outcome coming? Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, uh, yeah, I'll just thank everybody again for watching, and that'll be the end of it, I guess. <laughs> Say goodbye, everybody. I love you. We love you. Hi, Doug.